Okay. Lovely. There's no sound? No, I just haven't started saying anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so another thing that I'm doing a little bit differently is I have invited an artist that I am mentoring one on one named Pam Prairie. I don't know if she's away from her desk or just being shy right now, but Pam is joining us. And I've actually spent the day um, th this morning a little bit of time introducing her to watercolor. She came to me and said, Nick, next year I want to learn watercolor. And um, I gave her a little crash course in the in some wet techniques and some dry techniques. And, and I then invited her to join us here so that she can get some extra practice. So I will be talking through what I do a little bit more than usual, maybe. But um, whether I hope that could, you know, help some people or again, it's just going to be a distraction tune out. and Pam, if you are listening, like I said to everyone, I, I like these sessions to be for play and experimentation, not, not worrying about getting it right. So that is usually my attitude with almost everything I make. And I may deviate from some of the things that we talked about in our lesson this morning. And part of that is just to show you what's possible, expose you to new things, but um, don't, if it starts getting overwhelming, just feel free, just stick with what you are comfortable with. Hey, Pam, there you are. <laughs> Sorry, I muted you for a second, but there you are. Okay. And, and Pam, f definitely feel free to unmute yourself and ask me questions, because I know, you know, you, you're, you're going to be getting some extra practice this morning and you, 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 Probably hasn't been enough time for all the things we talked about an hour ago to uh, to really marinate. So feel free to ask a question, but I think that might be helpful for the whole group. Too. That's me. Sorry, Pam, was that you? No, not me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Pardon me. Okay, so I am going to begin, let's see what I got here. I've got my colors wet. Let me spray them just once more. And honestly, I'm very tempted to just spray my whole paper wet and just start putting colors where I see them, not worrying about making things too... Um, you know, worrying about each individual lily pad. I'm not going to count lily pads. I'm just going to see green and put green down, see other shades of green and put green down. And maybe I might pick out some of the uh, the areas where the, the lilies at the bottom are. Um, I might lift some of that paint up so that I could have some dry paper to work with and try and sculpt some of those out. But I'm going to start with getting it wet everywhere. And Pam, you'll see I'm using my um, my spray bottle, but I'm going to do a little bit of both. I've sprayed the surface, but I'm going to just make sure that it's mostly where I might spread it around a little bit with a brush just to make sure that it's I'm getting water mostly where I need it. So again, like we like we talked about, I am beginning with sort of an underpainting in uh, with the wet technique.
And then as this blue, I'm looking at the blue of the water, as it descends, I see it gets a little more purple, a little more green, some areas. So I'm gonna bring in like a, a different blue. Maybe a speck of red just to bring that blue into a little more of a purple violet zone. Oh, too much red. All right. And then while we're still wet, I can get some of that, just some of that nuance that I'm seeing. Some fun little purple happening down in this bottom right corner, I see. See that this area in the top, generally the top is lighter than the bottom. So I'm going to just quickly lift some of that up so that, there we go. And then Gingerly try to apply a little bit more water to certain areas where that top section of lilies are and where the bottom ones are. And try and get just some of the, the green of the lily pads where I see them. Again, I'm not counting lily pads. I'm just going to hope for the best and get some color down generally where I see it. I'm dropping in some green now into the blue. Again, not trying to even think about the shapes of water lilies or that I'm painting water lilies even. Just where my eye sees green, my brush paints green. And then my plan is once this dries a little bit more, I'll start going in with darker and darker strokes to sort of pick out, tease out some of the uh, things that are happening here. But right now, it's just about getting colors where I see them. <laughs> I see you there, Mary Duffy. <laughs> you can't hide. <laughs> Welcome to the practice hour. Um, Thank you. Sorry, I'm late. 
No, no worries at all. Um, one of my dear classmates from my MFA years at the Marshall School has just entered the practice session. What a great way to start 2024. Mary, are you drawing today or are you painting? I've got some watercolors, so. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> lovely, lovely. All right, so now I'm 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 in I'm in the wet technique still. I still have some glistening water on my sheet, but I'm going to come in with slightly earthier greens and still try and just put the colors where I see them. Okay, so generally, yeah, I like to start with a bit of a, a wet underpainting in watercolor just to get some like major, just to sort of have like a once over of the whole image and start to shape it um, in the way that I feel like generally it, it, it needs to take shape. Um, I'm going to go just a little bit more with the like minty greens. The really light one so i'm gonna bring some white back in and try and bring these areas towards minty green <laughs> minty green for me Voila. I can feel my uh, my tendency to sort of want to start switching into my my more uh, painterly mode where I'm starting to pick out shapes and things. So I'm trying to stick in the general still and I'm just making some light strokes into a puddle of water that sort of resemble the the horizontal orientation of these uh, of these water lilies, but not not outright drawing them. Shoot. Shoot. Right. And then usually once I've had like a once over of the whole thing, I will take a minute, uh, let it dry. I find if I'm working outside in the sun, this doesn't take very long at all. The sun tends to dry things out pretty quickly. Indoors on a partly cloudy day in DC, it might take a little longer, but what I wanna do next is sort of switch into like my drawing mode and start picking out color to, to, uh, to draw with. Pam, how are you doing over there? Okay, Pam's hard at work. Unmute yourself.
There you go. Am I unmuted? Unmuted? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> unmuted. There I am. Yep. Carrying on okay? Yeah, I'm putting color on. Fantastic. <laughs> Okay, Pam. So remember, at the beginning of this, I said that I may deviate a little bit from what we worked from this morning, just uh, in the in the spirit of play and experimentation. Um, so don't let this totally rock your world, because I know your world is already very rocked by just <laughs> landing on planet watercolor and having to deal with, you know, strokes that flow everywhere and all that stuff. Um, but for the sake of play and art, I do have a set of watercolor pencils, and I think this would be a nice time to try them while the paper is still damp. Let me see if I can just mark, sort of begin to evoke what some of these flowers might show up. It's already a little more, there's a little more color being put down than I want, but I'm wondering if I can go back over with some white white watercolor tomato and dial these marks that I'm making right now down a little bit. Who knows, I may pay for this experiment later, but I figure I'm just looking at this glistening page of water drying on my paper and I'm thinking, what can I do? How can I take advantage of this situation? We'll see. I may be paying for that later, but let's keep going, not overthink it. Mm 
again, I'm going into it with a little more of this watercolor pencil just to start bringing out. I'm not trying to draw each lily pad. I'm just trying to draw in a way that behaves like the way the lily pads are oriented on the page. And try to, um, you know, make a little, a little sense of the colors that I put down. Now, since the paper is a little more wet down here, I'm definitely getting a little more of a response from the, the pencils as I'm dragging them across the, uh, the page to make my marks. So I'm just coming around one last time with this red watercolor pencil, but I think 
I am starting to my my interest is starting to, to leave that phase and ready to for something else. Okay. So how am I going to pull this together? Well, let's start. Let me take a small brush. And I want to lighten up some of what I did. Basically, the general relationship I'm seeing when I look at this image, I don't know if you all feel the same way, but there's a lot less contrast happening in the top half of the image. And I'm sort of depending on that. I'm looking at that and I'm depending on that to distinguish what is further away from me and what is closer to me. So the colored pencil that I tried is a little unforgiving. So, and some of these marks came out a little darker than I anticipated. So I'm gonna try with just water in my brush, softening them up a little bit and seeing what, what sort of compromise I can come up with. Have any of you tried using watercolor uh, pencils before? I have, yeah. A little bit? I, I, I can't say that I've really found like a reliable method for, for, for getting what I want out of them. But sometimes, I don't know, I, I think I keep, keep I do find myself returning to them, like trying to, wanting to believe that there's something fruitful um, here. Okay, so in those flowers, I'm gonna chalk them out a little bit with a little bit of white on top. Everywhere I have this pink, it's just too, you know, too pink, too pink to do. There we go, a little more subtle. Still a little too dark for my taste in those green zones, so I'm going to try and... I also don't want so much definition, so I'm, gonna try, I'm trying to lift up, use my brush to lift up some of what's there. I take dry paper towels too often to my watercolors to try and just dab up color and lift up things. Okay. I think I just have to live with that for right now.
another thing that I am depending on in this image is are the shadows, the shadows underneath each of these lilies, how dark they are, the way that they, they, they hug the pink, red of the flower uh, right underneath and, and the way they stick together, how that, that puts those flowers in space. And how the shadow helps draw them, help, helps make them come to life in a way. Try and get some of that in right now and focus on that, that light dark relationship. find myself going into these flowers with a little bit more red, a little bit of crimson, just to give them a little shape. It's a little bit darker. Uh -oh. Now, I think... I'm going to refrain from evaluating my work where I'm at right now. And I'm simply going to focus on how do I bring this together? How do I bring it home, so to speak? Like you've, you've hooked a fish, but you got to get it on the boat. And that itself is a treacherous practice where you've started it and you're on the ride. But you've got to get it, you've got to secure it onto the boat. Let's see if I can do that. So I'm kind of bringing a little bit more blue to the top, this blue indigo. A lot of my work at the end of this is going to be trying to sort out all the connective tissue at the bottom there, all those spaces between lily pads, how that brings everything together. And I'm going to be really curious at the end of the session to see how all of us are, are handling this. So Pam, if you're 
following, I don't know where you're at with yours, but I am just about switching over to mostly dry strokes at this point um, to just try and balance some, some, some color in certain areas. Like for example, right here, this whole area needs to be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna come in and just bring in some paint and kind of get the shape of what I'm seeing there. Just lifting up some of the color so I could have some of that green poking through. There's all these fun lily pads that sort of ascend in this part of the image. So not quite at the end, but towards the end of this, I can feel my patience waning and, and, <laughs> and using that awareness to let myself go a little bit more at the end, maybe not worry so much about <laughs> I don't know, maybe pay attention to the things that I say at the beginning of the session and try not to worry about making it look like what's out there, but just going for the ride of, um, of copying the image. It's um, really interesting. I don't know if other people have this experience, but 
I find that, um, I don't know, with certain practices, painting, drawing, I definitely feel this way with meditating, but it takes time. It really takes time for your mind to settle, um, to get away from preconceived ideas of what you're going into exactly when you're painting and drawing. Um, it takes, it's like, um, you know, if you agitate, you know, a glass of water, all the, the time that it takes for the water moving in the container to, to sort of steady, sit still, and then allow you to see through it again, um, it takes time for that clarity to arrive when you're doing some of these practices, these like zone flow creative practices. Um, you sort of have to let it get there on its own time. And it's, it's, it's not really something you can um, switch on or off. But when you do arrive there, and it feels free, and fun and liberating, I think you, the potential to make some beautiful stuff is quite high. Or to even surprise yourself, that's the best. So I think for the last little bit, actually, no, 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 there's passes, I think. So usually at the end, I'm trying to like assess some of my, just the overall balance of light. So moments like this that I need to address that are taken away from the light that's happening up here. Let me, let me address that real quick right now. Oops. Okay, I will live with that. Okay. May I ask why you're br you're using a flat brush? Why I use a flat brush, Josette is asking. I use a flat brush because I I prefer the marks that it makes. Um, I I like here. I'll do it a little bit on the side here, but I like. I guess the way my eye sees, and the way I want to translate what I see into a painting is done with a square brush. I just see and draw sorts of in patches. I don't know, it's just the right instrument that 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 speaks the language that I'm 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 sort of seeing and imagining. Um I like big square because it makes me think in areas of color as opposed to try something, you know, like a round brush with a really fine tip that might um, lead me to believe that I can get all the details. I think working more generally with a square brush um, that has me focusing on areas of light and dark and color is, suits me a little bit better. Um, if I need a thinner stroke, I can turn it sideways. Okay, so like, you know, I could paint like this or I can make my marks like this if I need something thinner. Um, and yeah, you know, when you do, when you get really gestural 
uh, with flat square brushes, it can it can make for some really nice um, handwriting in your work as well. So yeah, that's why I like flat. But I don't think it's a, a popular choice for watercolor um, based on yeah. what I see. Yeah, yeah, especially I mean, you know, in some of the his paintings, Renoir has to use a, a flat brush, square brush, like the first one ever impressions of sunrise. But here you have so much flow that it's very hard to just dab, I think, you know, with a flat brush instead of the round brush that can really help you with the flow, be it the vertical lines or, or especially horizontal lines. I don't know. That's <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, you're, you're right. It's, it's, I've, when I sort of set out to, when I left my last career and sort of set out to become an art teacher, um, when I, I started painting again after being away from it for, for a few years, and my, my mentor at, who was helping me in that, in that stage, um, taught all of her students with flat square brushes like this mm. bigger ones etc and this is oil painting that i'm talking about so uh -huh. i've basically the past like seven years all of my painting has been with flat square brushes just because that's sort of mm. a product of how of what i was re how i was reintroduced to painting in a way yeah but also um also just what I liked, what I, what suited me, what suited my way of, you know, distinguishing planes on a on an object, for example. Um, flat square makes more sense to me than round. Mm -hmm. um, but okay. yes, because I've practiced with it so much. Um, yeah, I mean, I use all the corners of this thing. I use, you know, I use the, the front edge, the whole side of it, this side, the corner. Um, I'm very familiar with flat square. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Of course. All right. So we're looking at about five minutes left in this session, everyone. So wherever you are, start looking at the whole image, the entirety, how it fits together and what what are the last how can you finish up what you're working on to bring some sort of balance to all the work that you've done this mm -hmm. afternoon um, i gotta say it's lovely to have some familiar faces but there are also some new faces um in the session yeah what's up jesse I have not met you before. How did you find out about the session? Um, my friend Jesse told me about it. Your friend Jesse told you about it. Cool. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah, and I had literally no idea what to expect. So then, when you were like, "We're painting," I was like, "Ah, oh, I'm not a painter, but let's do this." <laughs> oh, there you go. That's exactly the spirit. Just dive right in. Yeah. yeah so you, you know, to... uh, we'll see at the end how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. No. No worries. It's all. It's about just taking the time to get familiar with our um, yeah. our tools. Where are you zooming in from? Uh, I'm in Shelton, Connecticut. OK, great. Yeah. Yep. So thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for coming. Nick, you move around so much. Where are you these days? I am in Washington, DC right now. Oh, OK. Yeah, I'm in Washington, D.C. right now. Today is Sunday. Next Sunday, I fly to Dublin, where I will be for three months. Ooh. Yeah, so the next time we have this session in February, I'll be doing that one from Dublin. It'll be my, I'll figure out the time zone difference, but I think it'll be my evening. <laughs> Dublin is either four or five hours. I think it's five from us, but I think it's five, yeah. England, most of the UK is, and Dublin is probably six there. 
Yeah, it's in that that mix of islands up there. It's really only Iceland that's four hours away, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. <sighs> All right, everyone, just a couple more minutes. And for those of us who joined late, um, where is my... Uh, just a friendly reminder that um, I've dropped a link in the chat if you are interested in making a donation to the Marshute School. Um, we will always provide this practice hour free. I think it's a really important resource for um, the artists in our community. Um, and I think it's just really important to have some carved out time to practice. But if you are interested, please visit the link in the chat box. I'm so happy so many of you joined us. This is fantastic. I'd love to keep this up in 2024. Um, mm -hmm. So this is session one. We have 11 more, but I expect to see all of you at all 11 sessions now. <laughs> all right. Hi, th thanks, Nick. I just kind of came in to see what was going on. I've, yeah. I uh, was at the IAU for a semester as a fellow, and so I did the painting courses. And uh, so, anyhow, I thought I'd just check it out, especially because I've turned to watercolor, and I saw you were doing watercolor. So, fantastic! Thanks for joining, Marlene. But I, I didn't. I wasn't quite ready because I did a painting yesterday. So, I, uh, <laughs> I'll try next time. <laughs> no worries at all. Okay, everyone, I am going to remove the image and I would love it if you all quickly, I, I'd love to see what you all have made, if you if you don't mind just holding up to your camera. Nothing, nothing crazy, but this is such a wild and semi-abstract sort of um, subject we have that I'm curious how everyone handled it. Okay, cool. So, Corey, what are you working in over there? What's your medium? Could you unmute yourself? Here. I was actually planning on using graphite. Um, so then I ran around and I found some oil pastels and I didn't really like how that was going. So I, then I found some um, just soft pastels. So it's kind of a combination of the oil pastels and the soft pastels, which oh, yeah. is weird a lot, but... It was kind of fun. Super cool. Yeah, I mean, I like the rich, you know, the rich, uh, the richer pinks and violets and darks happening at the at the bottom there. Super cool. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. Yeah, Jesse, what did you what did you what did you come up with? Nice. And that's with watercolor. Is that watercolor she's using? Actually, I'm <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. It's one of those pre-made, like palettes that you get and i don't think it's watercolor because it's a little bit chalky oh okay yeah so yeah, yeah. it might be more like a gouache cool okay yeah that's what beautiful, i get beautiful work Sweet. Oh, i'm happy to see that so many of us picked up on some of the darker relationships happening in the bottom with the flowers that were closer to us and how that transitions into being more chalky and mm -hmm. uh, yeah chalked out in the as the as the flowers get away Okay, well, everyone, it has been lovely. Um, if you haven't already, um, I believe all of you must be uh, um, subscribed to either the Marshoots newsletter or my own. Um, Jesse, I don't know where you fit in all this, if you're a friend, Jesse, who just told you, but I, let me just show you all real quick, if you'd like to, um, there we go. Uh, feel free to visit this website. You'll find my monthly practice memos there. Subscribe for that, and you'll find, you know, the link for these practice hours every month. Um, alternatively, also, the Mark Schutz School has a great newsletter where um, you can learn more about their programs that they're offering this year. With them, in March, I will be doing a drawing class um, called Revisiting Rembrandt. So we'll be graphite, um, looking at Rembrandt, looking at some other artists too, but looking mainly at Rembrandt's statement on drawing, which we um, usually start our studies off with at Marshoots. 
Um, and other than that, I can't think of anything else I need to add in other than uh, thanks to Pam for joining. Pam is um, my my mentored artist that I have um, I have uh, invited to join us who got a crash course in watercolor um, this morning. And I said, well, how about you hop in on this and get some more practice? Um, but yeah, other than that, thank you all for coming. This was awesome. I was happy to get to practice with you. And keep an eye out in your inboxes for the memo for the next uh, practice session. All right. Happy New Year, Nick, and thanks. Happy New Year to you, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so Rob. much, Nick. Yeah, great to see you, Mary. Tell Rob I say Thank hi, Mary. I will. Yeah. Thanks very much, hey, Nick. Appreciate the time you give My pleasure, Alice. I hope to see you at the next one. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey Pam, stick around. Don't 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 leave just yet, Pam. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You all can stick around too. It's not like exclusive, but it's all good. Um, so what I want to show you finally, just because you asked uh, here. Oh yeah. So these are two images. These are two that I am I'm putting in a show here, here this weekend actually. But I want you to see just like how my process comes out in an image. Mm -hmm. and you could probably see how there's like a lot of wet technique for the underpainting mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. some darker, drier things, okay? That might, yeah. you know, dry technique. But then at the very end, I'll do a tiny bit of drawing with an ink pen. Okay. So that's all these marks here. Just the, the, super, the super fine lines, right? Yeah, just to articulate things a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I have a question for you that it's beautiful. The white that's in the center, is there any color on that or is that just like the white of the paper? Is that the paper speaking to me? Of, that is the paper speaking to you. That is the white of the okay. paper. Okay. Okay, because it's beautiful. That's that's the in the in practicing, um, that's the one thing.